Today, despite all its traditions, Kyoto is a vibrant modern city with half a million inhabitants. Tradition and modernity are considered less of a contradiction in Japan than in the West. In Kyoto, you will find traditional inns called ryokans, which still operate in almost the same way as a hundred years ago. Owner Haruji Ukai is the fourth generation to run this inn. Traditionally, guests not only sleep, but also eat in the ryokans. Kyoto's cuisine has a long and proud tradition, so I have no intention of changing it in any way. Today there is so much fast food, and even though people are very interested in food, there are only very few whose cooking is really refined. So what we do here helps to keep Kyoto's food culture alive. I want the guests to experience and appreciate the sounds, light and smells that characterize this place. These three sensory impressions can be found anywhere, but here they're unique, and we're lucky to be blessed in this way. It's my duty to preserve them and not change them at all. All of us, from the owner to the chef, try to understand who the guest is, how old they are, what they need, what they like and what they expect from us. In our kitchen, we always use seasonal and regional products. Because Japan is traditionally a Buddhist country, we use a lot of vegetables and marine products. This tradition makes for very healthy food, and we're totally committed to it. Fast food came to Japan about 40 years ago. Even people who are interested in good food often don't have the time or energy to prepare it. The classic kaiseki cuisine, practiced to perfection in Kyoto, consists of a sequence of many sophisticated small dishes whose ingredients express the current season. Eating in Japan does not take place in a large dining room, as separate rooms are preferred. In Ryokan Kinmata, the guests are mostly served in their rooms. The service is as attentive and respectful as the preparation is loving and elaborate. And equally important, the variety of dishes guarantees a balanced diet. And omotenashi, Japan's exquisite hospitality is not a one-way street. The contributions of the server are always respectfully appreciated. The Hiyote Honten is located on an old access road to Kyoto. Unobtrusive, modest, hardly recognizable as a restaurant from the outside, this three Michelin star venue is pure Kyoto style. Commercial travelers and pilgrims also stayed here in ancient times. Guests enter another world. They are led into a spacious, enchanted Japanese garden. Small waterways full of carp run through the garden. There are also old cottages, but the small buildings have a slightly neglected appearance. A Japanese woman in a kimono and with an old-fashioned lamp leads guests not to the table, but to their own cottage, which usually consists of only one or two rooms. This is where the food is served. They don't get to see any other guests. Aichi Takahashi is one of Japan's really great chefs. The airs and graces affected by some top European chefs are completely alien to him. The kitchen, too, exudes modesty. He has no need for show. I'm the 14th generation of chefs here, 
My son is the 15th. I would say that the essence of Japanese cuisine is in the broth, which we manufacture from bonito tuna and seaweed. It's very healthy and is the basis of everything we make. We use oil very sparingly, and that makes our food very healthy. Few foreigners find the Hiyote restaurant, and it's true that a meal here can easily cost more than 300 euros per person. But for this sum, the guest gets delicacies that he will never have tasted anywhere else. Michelin has been rating restaurants in Kyoto since 2010. The food at Hiyote's was given three stars straight away. But the ultimate award for chefs in the rest of the world doesn't hugely impress Chef Takahashi. <laughs> I'm quite grateful, but it doesn't really affect me. I already know what it means because I have French chefs as friends. But for me, the greatest honor is to receive a medal from the emperor. The first Michelin restaurant guide on Kyoto was published in 2010. The restaurants in this small city have received an incredible 110 Michelin stars. There is probably not such a star density anywhere else in the world, yet people show relatively little interest. Along with a number of other restaurants in Kyoto, Yoshiko Imamura has refused to be listed by Michelin. She doesn't like the idea of letting French restaurant critics rate her exquisite dishes. My philosophy is to serve every guest as well as I can from the heart. It's not about stars. It is simply a matter of doing what is right. In traditional venues such as the Umamura, guests can still have geishas come to the restaurant to entertain them. In a time when TV and films were unknown, geishas provided entertainment with their performances, conversation, music and dance. Guests who wanted to make an evening for their party to remember, sometimes including erotic services of the more subtle kind, invited geishas. Kyoto remains the center of Japanese geisha culture to this day. But it's a slowly dying trade. In recent decades, its importance has steadily decreased. Because geishas undergo years of training, their services are highly priced. And their rigid formalism often seems anachronistic today. A modern interpretation of a Japanese food tradition can be found in Osaka, Japan's second largest city, just one hour from Kyoto. The Prana restaurant serves macrobiotic cuisine. Some people think it's a kind of therapy, but no, it's about nutrition. The point is to eat right, stay healthy, and enjoy life. That's the most important thing about macrobiotics. The Prana restaurant is more than just a restaurant. Supporters of the macrobiotic diet, developed in Japan, regularly meet here to cook together and try out new recipes. Like the traditional Japanese kaiseki cuisine, macrobiotics also insists on only using fresh food from the region. In macrobiotics, it's not just about food, it's also about how to live, with a smile and have a lot of fun. To do this, we need a healthy mind and a healthy body. In Japan, we are surrounded by good fishing grounds, and many kinds of vegetables grow here too.
Foods must be in harmony with each other, following the principles of yin and yang. If you always eat food from the region you live in, this is more likely to happen. In spite of a devastating earthquake and subsequent tsunamis, most parts of the metropolis of Sendai have remained intact, as they're slightly elevated. The region around Sendai is known for its good beef, like the Kobe region. Not macrobiotic, but equally well prepared, with the same typically Japanese devotion to perfection. Food is fried in tapanaki style on a large stainless steel surface. The meat from the Japanese Wagyu beef is crisscrossed by very fine veins of fat. Marbled, as the experts say, and that is what creates its especially tender and intense flavor. It only needs to be sautéed on both sides and it's ready to eat. Sendai beef. What is probably Sendai's most famous restaurant, Shukaikaku, is located in the hills above it, completely untouched by natural disasters. Over 100 years old, this former prince's residence is an unusually old building by Japanese standards. Here, an almost meditative mood prevails in the kitchen. The many small portions of kaiseki dishes are beautifully and elaborately decorated by hand. But what makes the shu kaikaku so special, apart from its sumptuous decor, unusual for Japan, is the food presentation. Each guest gets a chest of drawers in which there are selected treats. The prince who once lived in this house designed this chest of drawers. We then made a miniature version of it and filled the drawers with our appetizers, for example with a soya bean rice cake, beef tongue, grilled fish and so on. It's always a surprise. A guest opens a drawer and finds something in there. This also provides a topic of conversation and makes for a festive mood. Gastronomy in Japan, more than in Europe, is also a matter of aesthetics, a feast for the eyes, and presentation must be impeccable. No effort is spared, and only when the guest is satisfied is the host's world also in order and the sky over Japan bright and clear, despite all the trials that nature may send. <laughs>